sort of things happen when uh, when people are getting attacked in their own. Uh, I also want to say, and I would normally not want to give this any oxygen, but I want to absolutely and completely denounce the statements made by Senator Annie in all of the comments that he has made, in his conflation of this horrendous terrorist attack with issues of immigration, in his attack on Islamic faith specifically. These comments are appalling and they're ugly and they have no place in Australia, in the Australian Parliament also, and he should be frankly ashamed of himself. Uh, when people are getting attacked in their own... What I said was that um, a terribly unfortunate thing, uh, a tragedy, uh, but it's going to be eventually accepted uh, or expected that these sort of things happen when uh, when people are getting attacked in their own. Uh <laughs> Okay, so the teenager you saw there smashed an egg on the back of his head. Anning fought back. Would you like to see semi-automatic weapons banned? Uh, that's certainly one of the issues that I'm looking at uh, with immediate effect. Um, I've asked for advice yesterday on all of these questions. Would you consider a buyback program like in Australia? Again, a bit too early for, for me to say at this point. Uh, but again, uh, as soon as New Zealanders hear that someone was legally able to acquire, as I'm advised... Uh, those weapons and carry out this event uh, that will raise enormous questions with our gun laws uh, and that is why we will respond swiftly. I'm advised that there were five guns used by the primary perpetrator. There were two semi-automatic weapons and two shotguns. The offender was in possession of a gun licence. I'm advised that this was acquired in November of 2017. A lever-action firearm was also found. While work has been done as to the chain of events that led to both the holding of this gun licence and the possession of these weapons, I can tell you one thing right now. Our gun laws will change. I have asked our agencies this morning to work swiftly on assessing whether there was any activity on social media or otherwise that should have triggered a response. That work is already underway. This individual was not on the radar uh, of either Australian intelligence agencies or New Zealand intelligence agencies. Yes, he had travelled to a range of countries, sporadically been in and out of New Zealand for periods of time, uh, but I've asked uh, on Monday to convene again, reconvene, all those agencies who will be able to piece together the nature of that travel, the sequence of events in terms of obtaining gun licences, and then shortly thereafter, the gun licence was obtained in November 27, uh, 2017. The purchasing of weapons began in uh, December 2017. So obviously a sequence and chain of events there uh, that began um, some time ago, but those are all uh, issues that we are seeking answers around. There are obviously questions being asked of how this person was able to enter the country and undertake this act of terror. I have instructed, instructed ODES to report to Cabinet on Monday on this sequence of events with a view to strengthening our systems on a range of fronts, including but not limited to firearms, border controls, enhanced information sharing with Australia, and any practical reinforcement of our watch list processes. Police immediately secured the areas involved and ensured that people were kept safe, including schools and offices being locked down. 
Police made arrests swiftly. And as I've said, a man will in appear in court this morning. Defence specialists quickly moved to assist police to make the improvised explosive devices safe. The national threat level was raised to high, and that remains. This triggers a number of actions to help keep, keep people safe, such as increased aviation and border security. A number of specialist family liaison staff were deployed. Close liaison has been established with the Muslim community and other key people in Christchurch. Police and the wider government will be working with leaders and members of the Islamic community to provide assistance, reassurance and support. Consular representation for any foreign nations involved is being provided. At this stage, we involved, understand those involved include Pakistan, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, Indonesia and Malaysia. I, have, I do want to acknowledge I have received uh, messages of condolence um, from around the world. Uh, many have come via MFAT, but some have come to me directly, including uh, Frederica Mogherini, um, Pedro Sanchez um, from Spain, Franz Timmermans, Bill Shorten, obviously um, PM Scott Morrison, Theresa May. Uh, and also um, I spoke with Donald Trump this morning. Uh, he sought to um, call us directly. He very much wished for his condolences to be passed on uh, to uh, New Zealand. He asked what offer of support uh, the United States could provide. Uh, my message was sympathy and love for all Muslim communities.